wash behind your buffers. Up in the mountains, there are many railway tracks that the little narrow gauge engines run on. There are also many roads. Madge is a snub-nosed lorry. She drives around the mountains and valleys, delivering goods to the villagers. Madge likes all the narrow gauge engines. Madge is very kind. She likes to take care of everyone she meets. One morning, Mr. Percival, the thing controller, came to see Madge. There is to be a country show and engine rally, he said, and Reneus and Scar Lowy are to lead the rally. How wonderful, said Madge. The engines must be extra clean and shiny. I need you to take them some soap and brushes. Of course, smiled Madge. I'll deliver them right away. And make sure you're back in plenty of time, added the thin controller. You have a very important job. You are to pull the brass band. You need to be clean too. How exciting, exclaimed Madge. I'll be the cleanest lorry you have ever seen. Madge was very proud. This will be the grandest country show and engine rally ever, she smiled. There was a lot to do. First, Madge went to see Reneus. Reneus had been working at the coal mine. He was very dirty. But soon he was being washed and scrubbed for the country show. Madge watched. She had to make sure Reneus was extra clean and extra shiny for the engine rally. Get the engineer to scrub all the way round your number and nameplate, Madge told Reneus. Madge made sure his whistle was washed and his boiler bands were buffed. There, Madge exclaimed, now you're ready for the rally. And wash behind your buffers, she called as she drove away. Madge still had lots to do. But now Madge was late. She had to hurry. She drove faster and faster. The mountain roads were very dirty. This dirt will take a long time to get off, thought Madge. I must make sure I'm back in plenty of time. I have to be washed and polished too. But when Madge arrived at the quarry, Scar Lowy was very dirty. Goodness, said Madge, you're a real mucky buffers. We're going to have to work very hard to make sure you're extra clean for the engine rally. Soon Scar Lowy was covered in bubbles. Madge waited. She wanted to make sure he would be extra shiny. Scrub from the top of his funnel all the way down to his footplate, Madge told the engineer. It took a long time, but at last Scar Lowy was clean. Now you'll look grand at the engine rally. And one more thing, she called. Wash behind your buffers. Now, Madge really was late. Madge raced to the village. She drove down more dirt tracks. Oh, no, Madge moaned. I hope I can still get clean in time. Reneus and Scar Lowy were waiting in the village square. Their paintwork gleamed, their domes glistened in the sun. You look grand, said the thin controller. He was very proud of his little engines. Then Madge arrived. She was filthy. The thin controller was surprised. Oh dear, he said. You're very dirty. Don't worry, Rev Madge. I'll go and get washed and wiped right now but mud had clogged up Madge's exhaust pipe. Suddenly, she backfired. The mud sprayed all over Reneus and Scar Lowy. 
Oh, no! cried Madge. Then Madge saw the brass band. Madge was worried. How am I going to get you clean in time? I'm the dirtiest of all, she cried. We could help get you clean, puffed Scarlowy. But you're dirty too, Madge moaned. The band is waiting for you, chuffed Reneus. Madge gasped. She knew she had to be extra clean and shiny to pull the brass band. It was time for her to get clean. Make sure you clean her wheel arches, puffed Reneus. And wash her windscreen, chuffed Scarlowy. Soon Madge was sparkling and clean. Thank you, she said. Now you have to get clean too. Madge was about to tell the engines how to get extra clean and extra shiny. Then she saw what the engineers were doing. They were scrubbing all around the number and nameplates. They washed the whistles and buffed the boiler bands. They scrubbed from the top of their funnels right down to the footplates. My, what a wonderful job, laughed Madge. That's because you helped us before, puffed Reneus. Madge smiled. She felt very happy. It was soon time for the country show and engine rally to begin. Madge sparkled and shone as she proudly pulled the brass band. You both look wonderful, called Madge. But she still wasn't sure if they had washed behind their buffers. Duncan does it all. Duncan is a very lively engine. He likes to do important jobs and he always likes to be busy. One afternoon, Duncan arrived at the wharf. He had to collect trucks of straw. More trucks of straw, he wished. Duncan was fed up. What's the matter? tooted Thomas. I've been doing the same job all day long, grumbled Duncan. Collecting silly straw and taking it up to the farms in the hills. I want to do something more exciting. Just then, Rusty puffed in with trucks of slate. He looked tired. Hello, he wished wearily. I have so many jobs to do today, I'm all puffed out. What sort of jobs? asked Duncan. Next, I have to pick up some sightseers and show them the ruined castle, chuffed Rusty. That sounds more exciting than delivering straw, Duncan tooted. I'll take your passengers for you. All right, hooted Rusty. But only if you have time and can do a good job. I have plenty of time, snorted Duncan. This is an exciting job. Duncan left his trucks of straw and he puffed off to pick up the passengers. Duncan had collected Rusty's passengers. Soon he was chuffing cheerfully through the beautiful countryside. Look at the sights, look at the sights! His wheels clickety-clacked along the tracks. Duncan was enjoying his new job. The passengers were very happy to see all the wonderful sights. This is a wonderful job, Duncan wished happily. On the way across the lake, the passengers got out to take some photographs. Duncan had to wait for them. He wished he had something to do to pass the time. Just then, Scarlowy puffed up. He was pulling trucks of logs from the sawmill. Flatten my funnel, he whooshed. These trucks are heavy. I hope I'm not too late for my next job. Where is your next job? Duncan asked his friend. I have to collect sheep from the farm, puffed Scarlowy, and take them to the market. That sounds more exciting than waiting here, Duncan tooted. I'll take the sheep to market for you. Thank you, steamed Scarlowy. 
but only if you have the time and can do a good job. I have plenty of time, chuffed Duncan. This was an exciting job. And he puffed off to collect the sheep. The sightseers were very surprised to be left behind. At the farm, Duncan coupled up to the sheep truck. This is a wonderful job, he whistled excitedly. Then Duncan puffed off to market. Duncan clickety-clack through the countryside with his sheep. This is much more exciting than pulling passengers, he hooted. Up the track, Sir Handel was at the water tower. What are you doing today? puffed Duncan. The thin controller needs me for a very special job, wished Sir Handel grandly. What job? puffed Duncan. I have to collect a merry-go-round from the transfer yards, Sir Handel chuffed. Duncan's boiler bubbled. That sounds more exciting than delivering sheep, he wished. I'll do it for you. And before Sir Handel could say anything, Duncan raced away to the transfer yards. Duncan was feeling very pleased with himself. He had had such an exciting day. Then he saw the thin controller. He was talking to Rusty and Scarlowey. He was very cross. The farmer has just telephoned, said the thin controller sternly. His straw hasn't been delivered, there are sightseers in his field, and his sheep haven't arrived at market. Boss my buffers, Duncan gasped. I promised my friends I'd do a good job, he wished, but I haven't. And now his friends were in trouble. It's all my fault, sir, puffed Duncan. I wanted to do an exciting job, so I asked Rusty and Scarlowey if I could do their jobs but I didn't finish them properly. You haven't done your own job either, Duncan, said the thin controller sharply. Duncan knew he was right. I'll go back and deliver my trucks of straw straight away, he wished sadly, and this time I'll finish the job. At the wharf, Duncan coupled up to his trucks. Thomas was surprised. I thought you wanted to do something exciting. He tooted. I did, wished Duncan. Now I want to deliver this straw to the farm. It's a very important job. And he puffed quickly away. Duncan met Rusty at the lake. Do you want to help take my sightseers to the forest? Hooted Rusty. No, thank you, chuffed Duncan. I'm enjoying doing my own job. Scarlowey was unloading the sheep at market. Next, I have to collect some cows, he whistled. Do you want to help? No, thank you, chuffed Duncan. Delivering my straw is just as exciting. When Duncan arrived at the farm, the farmer was pleased to see him. That made Duncan feel very happy. He had finished his job properly, and he had been a really useful engine. Dingaling! Freddy was a fine old mountain engine. He knew more about the hills, the valleys, the hidden tracks, and the highland villages than any other engine. But there were still some things that Freddy didn't know. One morning, Freddy, Peter Sam and Mighty Mac were at the wharf. Mr Percival was going on a family cycling holiday. James was bringing a new bicycle. You are late, James, whistled Freddy grandly. The thin controller is waiting. I came as fast as I could, James wished crossly. Freddy was to deliver the bicycle, so it was loaded onto his flatbed. There's no bell, James huffed. 
I don't think a bicycle bell is important, puffed Freddy. It's very important, snorted James. It's like a whistle. It lets everyone know you're there. That made Freddy feel very silly. One of you must find a bell for the thing controller's bicycle right away. James steamed snootily. Peter, Sam and Mighty Mac didn't know where to find one, so they looked at Freddy. Freddy didn't know, but he didn't want to ask James. Of course I know where to find a bicycle bell, Freddy chuffed quickly. He didn't want James to think he was even sillier. So he puffed quickly out of the wharf. Freddy chuffed along. Ding-along, ding-a-ling, find a bell with the very best ring. He whistled cheerfully, but he couldn't see a bicycle bell anywhere. Freddy puffed up to a farmer with his cows. Hooray, he chuffed. A cow bell would be as good as a bicycle bell. The farmer hung the bell on the handlebars. Just then, Mighty Mac puffed up. The cowbell clanged. Listen to that, chuffed Freddy proudly. This is far better than a bicycle bell. But the cows didn't look up. The cows aren't taking any notice at all, huffed Mighty. That'll never do for a bicycle bell, chuffed Mac. Freddy felt silly, and he chuffed quickly on his way. Then Freddy puffed into Top Station. Cuffy the Clown had a ring of bells around his neck. They jingled and jangled. Hooray! Freddy chuffed. Cuffy's bells would be as good as a bicycle bell. Cuffy hung the bells next to the cowbell. Just then, Peter Sam puffed up. The bells chimed and tinkled. Listen to that, whistled Freddy proudly. But the children kept laughing with Cuffy. The children aren't taking any notice at all, puffed Peter Sam. They'll never do for a bicycle bell. Freddy felt even sillier, and again he chuffed quickly away. Freddy had puffed all over the hills. I will have to go back to the wharf, he steamed sadly, and tell them all I can't find a bell and he huffed slowly away. Freddy arrived at the wharf. He could see Peter, Sam, Mighty Mac and James. They were waiting for him. I must find a bicycle bell somewhere before they see me, he puffed, and he chuffed quickly away from them. Freddy looked everywhere, and then he saw it. A shiny new school bell. Hooray, he whistled. A big school bell is far better than a little bicycle bell. With a bell that big, everyone will know the thing controller is there. The workman put the bell on the bike, but it was very heavy. The bicycle toppled off the flatbed and crashed to the ground. All the bells jingled and jangled. Peter, Sam, Mighty Mac and James heard the clatter and rushed over. The yard manager was very cross and everyone looked at Freddy. The thin controller is waiting for his new bicycle, the yard manager said sternly. I'll have all the bells taken off, then you must deliver it to him. Freddy felt sillier than he had ever felt. Later, Freddy was puffing glumly out of the wharf. He met Thomas chuffing in. What's the matter, Freddy? tooted Thomas. Freddy told Thomas everything that had happened. And it's all because I felt silly and didn't ask James where to find a bicycle bell. I'm sure you'll find one soon, Thomas whistled. Suddenly, Freddy saw a bright new foghorn on Thomas's flatbed. Where are you taking that bright new foghorn? Freddy asked. It's not new. It's old, tooted Thomas. But it still works very well. It has just been cleaned and painted. Now I know just what to do, Freddy cried excitedly. And he puffed 
quickly out of the wharf. The thin controller looked at his new bicycle. There's no bell, he gasped. Yes, there is, sir, Freddy whistled. He asked the yard manager to take the old bell from the old bicycle. The yard manager polished it once, then he polished it again and put it on the new bicycle. It was as good as new. The thin controller was very happy. What a good idea, Freddy, he smiled. And James had to agree. Freddy didn't feel silly anymore. He felt very proud. Ding-a-ling rang the thin controller's bell, and Freddy toot-tooted back. Edward and the Mail Edward is a very wise engine. He knows all about the Fat Controller's railway. The other engines know they can always ask Edward for help. One morning, the Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. Percy has broken down. He's at the repair yard, boomed the Fat Controller. I need another engine to take the mail. Edward could do it, chirruped Emily. Yes, huffed Henry. Edward knows how to do everything. Good idea, said the Fat Controller. But Edward had never taken the mail before. Sir Topham Hatt told Edward to collect the parcels and deliver them just like Percy. Edward wanted to ask how Percy would deliver the mail, but he didn't want to look silly. I don't want the Fat Controller to think I can't deliver the mail, puffed Edward. I'll have to work out how to do it by myself. When Edward arrived at the mail depot, the station master was waiting for him. You have lots of parcels to deliver today, said the station master. Some for Farmer McCull, some for the children's party at Maithwaite, and some more for the school. Edward didn't know which of the parcels to deliver first. Maybe I should go to Farmer McCall's, Edward sighed. Or maybe to school. Edward puffed up to a junction. Thomas was waiting. Hello, Edward, chuffed Thomas. Are you delivering the mail today? Eh, uh, yes puffed Edward. You'll be good at that, tooted Thomas. Edward really wanted to ask Thomas which parcels he should deliver first, but Edward didn't want to look silly. The signal changed. Edward watched Thomas puff away. He was worried. Everyone thinks I know how to do everything, Edward moaned. I hope I can get it right. Edward decided to take the parcels to the children's party first. But Edward didn't know that Percy delivered the parcels in a special order. He accidentally left Farmer McCall's parcels with the children, and he whooshed away. Edward puffed across the countryside. Next, he delivered some parcels to the school. And finally, he delivered the rest of the parcels to Farmer McCall. That was easy, chuffed Edward. I made all the deliveries and I didn't have to ask anyone how to do it. He felt very proud and very relieved. But the Fat Controller was getting lots of phone calls. Edward had delivered the wrong parcels to the wrong places. When Edward found out what he had done, he was upset. I'll have to deliver them again, he wished sadly. Edward knew everyone was waiting for their parcels. He would have to hurry. 
First, Edward collected the parcels from the children's party. Then, he collected the parcels from the school. Now I have to collect the parcels from Farmer McCall, puffed Edward, and he steamed away. Edward was unhappy. I must not be late with these deliveries, he chuffed. Edward didn't want to let the fat controller down. I must hurry, he wished. Edward raced on. Mustn't be late, mustn't be late. But then, Edward had to stop at a junction. He didn't know which way was the fastest track to take to the farm. Edward was in such a rush, he didn't ask the signalman. Stop! shouted the signalman. That track is closed! Edward rattled round a bend and straight into a barrier. Parcels flew everywhere. I'll never deliver the parcels on time now, he moaned. Edward felt terrible. Soon the parcels were loaded back into Edward's trucks. Edward knew now he had to ask for help. I must find Percy. I will ask him what to do. So Edward steamed off to the repair yard. Percy was still being fixed. Percy, will you tell me how to deliver the mail? Edward chuffed. Of course I will, peeped Percy. He didn't think Edward was silly for asking at all. I deliver the parcels in a special order. I always start with the delivery that is furthest away, puffed Percy. Then I work my way back to Sidmouth Sheds. Edward was very happy he had asked Percy what to do. So Edward puffed across the island. Now he knew how to deliver all the parcels in the right order. The children got their parcels in time for the party. The right parcels were delivered to the school and Farmer McCall was very pleased. Everyone was happy. Everyone knew Edward was a wise engine, but now Edward felt even wiser. <laughs>